Hey guys, I'm Joy from Belgium, and my story is all about how one little prank can change your life forever. But before we get started, please like and subscribe. Growing up, I was the only child in a family of artists. My parents were always busy with their creative work, leaving me with plenty of time to play the rogue. I was a little red-headed ball of energy, and from a young age, I loved to joke and prank my parents and their friends, whether it was acting like a zombie or playing dead on the floor. By the time I was six years old, I was already pulling the fire alarm for fun, cutting my parents' hair in their sleep and secretly turning up the thermostat. Although I could be a handful, I was able to get out of trouble with my charming smile and big, pleading eyes. Surprisingly, I didn't have any issues at school either. Many of my classmates found me hilarious, and I had a talent for creating a fun atmosphere wherever I went. Of course, not everyone appreciated my sense of humor, especially the teachers, who were often the target of my pranks. But I never went too far, and they always forgave me in the end. Things were going great for me until we went to high school. Suddenly, my joy jokes started to seem childish and annoying to my classmates, and I became bored and stopped playing pranks. Around that time, a new student named David showed up at our school. He was a football star whose parents had just moved into our neighborhood. With trainers watching over him, clubs hunting for him, and a personal fan club of cheerleaders, David was the quintessential jock with a perfect reputation. I couldn't resist the opportunity to pull a trick on him. I started with some classic gags like shock pens, sticky notes, and even a snake in a can. But David didn't even seem to notice. Then I got more creative and put baby powder in his helmet. But it turned out that his fan club wanted to try it on, and one of the cheerleaders ended up getting covered in powder. Of course, it was funny, but I wanted to get him. So I decided to break out the heavy artillery. I set up slime buckets above the door of the locker room, and when the football team walked in, they all got covered in slime, except freaking David, who was the last to enter. But to my surprise, he started laughing so hard that I couldn't help joining in, along with the whole team. As expected, my prank got me suspended for a few days, and the principal made me clean up the mess I'd made before leaving. Hey, I see you can use a hand. Why are you helping me clean up the slime? Because I'm a decent human being? Or maybe I just wanted to talk to you. What about? Why, you don't stop trying to prank me? Did I do something to upset you? Or are you secretly in love with me and just trying to get my attention? Please, as if you're capable of upsetting me. And ew, in your dreams, you just seemed too good to be true. So I felt like getting to you with a prank. You know, like trying to find out what your kryptonite is. Wow, did you just call me Superman? And my kryptonite is pizza. Really? Ugh, so boring. And beautiful red-headed girls who deny thinking about me. Are there cameras here somewhere? Nope, but I wish there were, so I could relive how you blushed at my words over and over again. Uh, I'm getting a call. I gotta take this. I didn't hear anything. It's on silent mode, yes? Hello? Oh my god, my cat needs CPR? Hold on, Whiskers, I'll be right there. I ran off before things could get more awkward. As I sat at home the next day, thoughts of David filled my mind. Was I really falling for a football star? Ugh, so cliche. Suddenly, I got a text from an unknown number. Hey, look outside, smiley face. <gasps> David's car was parked near my house, and he was waving at me. Don't you have some cool, masculine-y stuff to do? I thought spending time with a pretty girl might be more fun. You know, I still owe you for helping me clean up that slime. Let's go grab some pizza. Be careful, Joy. I might just fall in love with you after this. I rolled my eyes, but my stomach fluttered. Maybe this cliche wasn't so bad after all. We spent the entire day together, and he opened up as a romantic and attentive guy who had a lot in common <laughs> with me. Like me, he was hyperactive, which is why his parents enrolled him in football at a young age. Soon, David asked me out on a date, and shortly, we were together. As we walked down the school hallways, I noticed the jealous glares from his cheerleader fan club. The girls tried to spread stupid rumors about me or even prank me, but I just <laughs> laughed it off. Soon, the cheer leaders even began to imitate me, dyeing their hair red in an attempt to capture his attention. But David only had eyes for me, and he made me feel like I was the only girl in the world. But three months into the relationship, I started wondering if David was keeping something from me. I knew he was very busy with his training, but a few times I found out that his football buddies had gone home while he'd disappeared somewhere else. I didn't believe it was about another girl, but something was off, and I started to be cautious. One day, a Tinder notification popped up on his phone. I couldn't read the message, but it made me feel uneasy. I didn't want to confront him about it directly because I knew he would brush it off as nothing and I would believe him. So I decided to create a fake Tinder account and play a prank on him. If he had nothing to hide, we would both have a good laugh and move on. I posed on Tinder as a young artist with a red ponytail and soon matched with David. We exchanged messages and he suggested a date. At that moment, I realized he might actually be cheating on me. It was no longer a joke. Okay, let's find out who you really are, David. 
David, I wore makeup, a wig, violet contact lenses, and clothes to look like my fake Tinder profile. We met at the cafe, and he was in his best mood. To avoid revealing my real voice, I pretended to be less talkative. He led the conversation, but sometimes he would stop speaking, gaze admirably into my eyes, and touching my hand. And I was getting angrier by the second. It was time to tell him he'd been caught. Suddenly, a beautiful girl with curly carrot hair rushed to our table, and David turned white. What the heck, David? You said it was a one-time thing. Georgia, listen to me. It's not what it looks like. Then what is it, David? You're with another girl while you're still with me? Before her, it was Francesca from the flower shop. Or are you seeing her too? How could you do this to me? Please, give me a chance to explain. As she stormed out of the cafe, David ran after her. My mind was racing as I tried to process everything. David was a womanizer obsessed with redheads? Me? Fake Tinder artist? Georgia? Francesca? Were there more? I needed more answers, and I decided to track down Francesca. It didn't take long before I found her. Surrounded by gorgeous flowers that paled in comparison to her beauty, she was a knockout. By any chance, are you David's girlfriend? Yes. Is everything okay? To tell you the truth, Georgia asked me to check if he's still with you. <sighs> Poor girl, I feel sorry for her. She's David's ex and she's obsessed with him, even now. She can't seem to accept that he's moved on and he's in love with me only. David was an amazing liar, and I felt angry at myself for falling for his stupid lies. I wished there was something like the cheating police, and I could call to have him arrested. But it was only me, and I had to do something. So I hmm. chose the one thing I was best at. I was gonna prank David. While we were hanging out the next day, I spied his phone password, and when he went off for training, I posted on his Facebook from his phone. Hey, Bay, if you're seeing this, get ready for a surprise tonight. Winky face heart, 7 p.m. at the fountain. At 7, the meeting point was crowded with red-haired girls, and I was just as shocked to see the number. I saw some familiar faces, like Georgia and Francesca, who hadn't seen each other yet. Finally, David arrived. The army of girls rushed to him, and then suddenly stopped to look at each other. David stared at them all in horror, realizing he'd been exposed. He panicked and just jumped back into his car, driving away like a maniac. This was you, wasn't it, Georgia? You arranged all of this so I'd break up with him. You're such a crazy ex-girlfriend. What are you talking about? We haven't broken up yet. What, what nonsense. nonsense. I'm, I'm his girlfriend. girlfriend. They all started fighting like crazy, and I escaped. I felt victorious about exposing the truth, but also heavy-hearted because of David's deceit. The day after was a really big football match. David performed horribly, and our team lost the game. The other team was trash-talking so much today. It just got to me and I felt distracted. Also, I think I'm coming down with a stomach bug, and I just didn't sleep much last night. David, please, stop lying. I know why your head wasn't in the game today. It's because your cheating got exposed yesterday. Yeah, I'm the one who called all the redheads there. I described my investigation, and he broke down in tears. Joy, please don't give up on me. I care about all my girls, and I never meant to hurt you. Love just happens, you know? But you're the only one who truly knows the real me, and I feel closer to you than anyone else. Please, let's work this out. David, you should work this out with a therapist, not me. But firstly, they all deserve the truth and an apology. You'll feel better once you're honest. And as for us, it's too late. I can't trust you anymore. Soon, the whole school seemed to know. The cheerleaders were giving me smug grins, and David's football <laughs> team looked angry at me for making him perform badly at the big match. Suddenly, I found myself at the center of unwanted attention. I began searching for a way to escape it and process everything that had happened. Fortunately, Georgia set up an online club for girls who were hurt by David. We all shared our stories and found out that David had been dating multiple red-haired girls for years, even proposing to some of them. I shared my story too, and it felt good to let it out. The girls even encouraged me to share it on the MSA channel. But I needed some offline support too, so I reached out to Georgia and Francesca. We kept meeting regularly, and slowly, we became good friends. We all went public with our story in a magazine article, and it gained a lot of attention. David was getting plenty of negativity, so he publicly apologized and said he'd get therapy for his issues. Well, clearly it didn't work, because years later, when he'd become a famous footballer and married a beautiful singer, she exposed his cheating publicly, divorced him, and left him almost penniless. Finally, David got what he really deserved. Yeah. Also, you can tell that I had a talent for acting, which I went on to pursue at a prestigious school. You see, Georgia had an older brother, Chase, who had the same curly red hair as her. When I first met him, he pulled a classic prank on us, switching the sugar and salt in our tea. Francesca spat it out and looked mad, but I couldn't help laughing. You better watch out, or you'll wake up the pranking dragon in me. Challenge accepted.
From that day on, Chase always found a way to be around us, and we had a blast playing pranks on each other. One day at the premiere of my first feature film, Chase said he had to talk to me about something important. I'm so proud of you, and you fill up my life with joy, Joy. I'm in love with you. Chase, wow, I, I think I feel the same way. I'm in love with you too. Oh my god, Joy, what? I was just joking. <laughs> What? Uh, yeah, <laughs> me too. Duh. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding now. The first one wasn't a joke. I do love you. Ugh, I'm gonna kill you.